Today's dream was brought to you by our friends at Paul Daniels. Paul Daniels is responsible for the board view software that I use that shows you the location of components and signals on the motherboard. He's also responsible for the multimeter software that I use that allows you to see the readings from my multimeter on the screen during the stream. He's created a new commercial version of his software with amazing new features that I'd like to demonstrate for you today. When you open up a board view in Paul's new software, it's going to automatically open up a PDF as well with the schematic. When you click on a component in Paul's new software, there'll be a new PDF button. When you click on the PDF button, it'll bring you to that component on the schematic itself so that you no longer have to type Control F, move to your keyboard, and mess around with it in order to find things on the schematic. Further, if you're in the schematic and you want to find something on the board view, what you do is you right click on that component and it'll immediately bring it up on the board view. If you click on a signal on the board view and you double click, it'll automatically bring you to that signal on the schematic. I can even click over here and as, as long as I keep clicking, it'll keep bringing me to those locations on the schematic. This is a beautiful way to troubleshoot and diagnose boards, especially if you're on something like a Power Rails page and you want to troubleshoot something like a no power board and you want to check every single rail. I can simply go to this page, I can right click on the Power Rail and it'll show me everywhere it shows up in the board. Gone are the days of having to type in each individual rail to find out where they are. I simply right click on any one of these Power Rails and it'll show me where they are on the motherboard. This integration between the schematic and the board view software is unheard of in our industry and is exclusive to Paul Daniels. Check out Paul Daniels' website as well, and you can also check out his YouTube channel. On Paul Daniels' YouTube channel, you'll find laptop repair, cell phone repair, component level repair, programming, and more. Don't delay. Check out Paul Daniels' website, YouTube channel, and software today. Find Paul Daniels at pldaniels.com. On the horizon, Paul Daniels is even developing a version of this software that will eventually work with iPhone schematics and board views so that you're no longer locked into the XW tool. Don't want to plug a dongle into your computer that randomly phones home to China? Gone are the days where you have to move your microscope out of the way so that you can type on your keyboard or awkwardly place your hands into the keyboard as you curse as you're hitting it against the microscope just so that you can find out where a power rail is. Constantly pushing the boundaries of innovation. Paul Daniels' new software allows you to harness the true power of the board view and the schematic and all of its information with nothing but your mouse. Buy today and Paul Daniels will throw in a free five-year license of tech support where he will personally walk you through how to get your crappy antivirus software to stop identifying his software as a virus as a false positive. Don't delay. Buy today. Okay, so what do we have on the desk for today? This looks like an 820 -00165. And it doesn't give a light on the charger. Now, as most of you know, the first rail that we need is PP3V42 because that allows the charger to talk to the system management controller. And over here on this inductor, which is filled with flux, we're getting 3.43 volts. Now, the next thing I want to do is see if the SMC is running. And I also want to check out what the DC in connector looks like. The DC in connector over here actually looks fine. And if you listen really, really closely, you'll hear that the assistant that we fired is back in the background. I heard that. <laughs> you hear? I can actually trap her there because she doesn't want to be seen on camera. So if I hit this button. Now she won't leave. You want me to stand in back? You're trapped in the corner of the store now. Here, hold that up in front of yourself as you walk. Seriously? Really? You. You've got to be kidding me. You're kidding. You f what the f <laughs> Anyway, back to work. So, if we look at the DC in connector, you'll see that it looks fine. So the next thing that I'm going to look at is see if the SMC is turning on. And I'll be able to determine that by checking the voltage on PP bus G3 hot. Nice save, Paul. <laughs> F7140 is the fuse for PP bus G3 hot. You'll see over here that the SMC is going to communicate with this chip on this line SM bus SM5, right over here, that little bi directional data line. 
this is where the SMC is going to communicate with this chip. And when the SMC communicates with this chip, when it's turning on, PPBush D3 hot is going to be a little bit higher than 8.1 volts. When the SMC is not communicating with it, it'll be lower than its spec voltage at 8.1. And as you can see, we're getting 8.1 volts there. That's no good. So what we're going to do next is see if the SMC is actually turning on. There's a chip called U5100. This chip is going to reset the SMC. And if the chip breaks, it'll permanently keep the SMC in reset mode. If the SMC is in reset mode, then it's not going to turn on properly. So let's take a look and see if the SMC is in reset mode or not right now. So we're going to find U5100 on the board. So over here, we're going to probe and measure SMC reset, which is going to be present on pin 5. SMC reset is 1.39 volts. Now we've got to figure out if the SMC reset is low because the SMC is shorting the signal to ground, which is a possibility, or because the chip itself is bad. And I'll let you leave your bets on that. But I'm going to take off the SMC just to check. I mean, the SMC reset, I see, not the SMC. Because taking off the SMC would, be, would be make me sad. Why does Paul have shower curtains under his desk? Why do you have shower curtains under your desk? Lewis, say something happens between you and Apple, and Apple makes a mistake, and they have to admit to all the stuff they've been doing over the years, and it becomes a big international scandal. Who would you want to play you in the movie? That's adorable. I don't think Apple, uh, there's not going to be any scandal because most people, it's not, it's not a scandal because people have accepted being treated like crap. You can't really call it a scandal. It's, a scandal would be, you know, oh my God, you didn't know it was happening, but people know it's happening, they just don't care. So that doesn't really cla cla uh, classify as a scandal. Have you watched Rich Rebuilds? Yes, I have. He actually messaged me, and he wanted to do a, a call in a stream, but some people quit right when he qu messaged me, so I never got back to him. So I feel like a real dick for that. If you're watching, Rich, I'm sorry. I actually do want to do a video with him. It would be fun to have a talk on Tesla. So now that the SMC reset I see is off the board, I'm going to plug it in, and it's not going to work because the SMC is going to wind up crashing. But I will be able to see if the SMC reset voltage is high again. And as can be seen there, the SMC reset voltage is 3.37 volts, which means that unlike all the boards that Paul gets that require an SMC, mine only needs a little SMC reset, I see. Ain't I lucky? You have to have some luck. You know? You have to make up for, you have to make up for things like owning shares of AGRX on last Friday in some way. This is a, this is a small way. Small little, little victories. All right, so new chip. Let's just make some nice, pretty little solder joints over here. Gonna make some pretty little solder joints with some nice Amtec flux. We're gonna make this a nice, happy little board again. It's okay, little board. I know that you didn't get any liquid protection from your, from your father. I know your dad didn't care about you. That's okay, little board. I care about you. I'm going to put you back together again. What phone do you have? I have a Samsung S7, which is dumb, because I should have my Moto G. I got my S7 because I thought it would be better for mobile live streaming if I decided to do more mobile live streaming. But I never did more mobile live streaming, and when I did, it was actually just as bad as the Moto G. Uh, the, it wasn't the phone that was, the, or the net, even the network that was the limit, limiting factor. It was the YouTube app. YouTube app with mobile live streaming, everything is just a pixel, regardless of the mobile network. Even good phone, bad phone, good network, bad network. Expensive, cheap, doesn't matter. So I use an S7. It has a nicer screen than the Moto G, I'll give it that much, you know, but like that's it. That's literally it. I just ate that capacitor. Whoops. Supposed to be on a diet. My personal trainer won't be happy with me. So let's put that back on there.
All right, we're going to give that a second to cool off before we plug this back in. And then we'll see if we really fixed this the easy way. So what do you all think? Think this is going to be a fan spin? Do you think we're going to have a glorious fan spin? I'm thinking fan spin. One way to find out. Okay, I'm going to turn on the power supply. That is just gorgeous. Fan spin. So what do we do to make this board work again? We noticed that there was no green light in the charger. And the charger is going to talk to the SMC on something called the system one wire line. So sys one wire is over here. And if we find this connector, this is the left I.O. This is the connector that leads to the left I.O. board. So this is the charger, and it's going to talk over this wire on the sys one wire line which is what you see over here, sys1 wire. Now sys1 wire is going to go over to the SMC. I love the PDF integration with the board view. God bless Paul Daniels for this. This chip needs to turn on in order to work. This chip is going to turn on if it's getting a reset signal. So the reset signal is going to be created by this circuit here. R5100 is going to pull up the reset signal, and U5110 pulls it down for a quarter of a second when the machine first turns on and then releases it. The reset signal is similar to the reset signal on the front of your desktop computer. If you have a desktop computer that you've built and it has a reset button, and you hold the reset key down, most likely if you hold it down, it's never going to start. You need to release the reset key in order for it to work. And the same thing is true here. That reset key cannot be held down or left low. Remember, underscore L on the schematic means low. That means that this signal is present when it is low. That's what underscore L means. So if this is zero, not 3.3 volts, that means that the reset is held down. The reason that you have this reset chip here is because this chip, the SMC, will crash if it tries to run right as the voltage goes to the board. So this chip runs off of a three volt rail, but it takes about a quarter of a second for that rail to stabilize. And this chip tells everything in the machine to turn on. So this chip can't turn on while this rail that's being created by this chip is still stabilizing. So the SMC reset IC is going to ensure that the SMC does not start for a quarter of a second before the machine turns on. So this chip is going to say, hey, I know that your machine just got power, but stop for the first quarter of a second and then turn on. It's going to delay the SMC reset from going high immediately. Now, if this chip breaks, it's going to keep SMC reset low all the time. And that's going to result in the machine not working. The other way that I can tell that the SMC wasn't on is that there's a power rail that's created by U7100. This is the main line in the machine. And it talks to the SMC on a data line. And when the SMC is not able to talk to the chip that makes this uh, power rail, what's going to happen is it's going to be lower than it's supposed to. So the SMC is going to communicate with U7100 right on this data line. And one thing I notice is that the main power line on the computer over here, which is PPBush G3 hot, will not be the full 8.5 volts that it usually is when the SMC is not working. It'll be 8.1. And we noticed it was 8.1 here. And that was part of why this wasn't working. Now, you may be wondering, I know that the first question at the forefront of your mind right now is, Lewis, if I wanted to buy myself one of those chips, if I wanted a U5100 chip, where would I go? Well, boy, do I have an answer for you. If you're looking for a U5100 chip, don't delay. Buy today. Go to store.rossmangroup.com. Now with over 1,000 reviews on Shopper Approved, a 4.9 star rating, free same-day shipping from New York City within the continental United States, you can't lose. Just type in U5110 up there, and it's going to auto-complete and immediately show you the product that you probably need. When I open up a board view, it's going to instantly open up a schematic. Ahem. When I open up a board view... Paul? Further, if I right-click on a component on the schematic... Further, if I select a... Further, if I select a... Further, if I select a component on the... Man, Paul, what the fuck? With Paul Daniels' new Flex board view, when you open up a board view file, it's automatically going to open up a... Mother fuck!